OK, let's bring it back to our top story today. And the messages we were discussing before the break from the IPCC is clear. Tackle climate change to save planet Earth as we know it. Over the past 20 years, temperatures have risen more than one degree since pre-industrial times. That means that where our ancestors saw extreme temperature events once a decade, we now see it near three times a decade. Where they saw extreme drought once a decade, we're going to see it nearly twice as often. And unless we halt global warming, things could deteriorate even further. Another three degree increase would result in more than nine extreme heat episodes a decade and three times as many floods with 30 percent more rain. My next guest says to combat that kind of change, we need data, specifically space data. Joining us now is Chad Anderson, managing partner of Space Capital. Chad, fantastic to have you on the show. We were just having a discussion with one of those that helped contribute to the IPCC report. And we were talking about some of the extreme temperatures, the events that we might see. Now I want to talk about tackling it. Your view on their report, what do we need? Well, so there's been a lot of, of chatter lately about the extravagance of space travel. And what we wanted to do with our report was really to reframe the conversation and, and highlight the you know, that we wouldn't even know about climate change if it weren't for space. The, the challenges that we're facing are, are global and they require a global perspective and space technology plays a foundational role in, in the emerging and growing climate market. How? NASA has been, you know, gathering data and observations for decades, um, which has led to these early warnings and the warnings that we're seeing now, and also to the early voluntary carbon markets. But these haven't been scalable. They've really relied on a lot of in-person assessments, um, which make them impractical. And, and frankly, we need more measurements. How accurate are they? Even when we're just assessing um, an individual business's carbon emissions right up to a nation state to be able to transact in a marketplace where you trade carbon emissions, for example, you kind of need to know what your emissions actually are and what your output is in order to actually do good for the planet. Otherwise, we may still see heating as we are seeing. That's exactly right. And I mean, the two biggest priorities right now are measurements and markets. Right. Without meaningful measurements, we can't get to scalable markets. And a lack of direct measurement is really what's preventing these climate markets from scaling up and is preventing us from building the types of solutions that can withstand and, and stand up to independent validation, which is not necessarily the case today. So, so you can't do, um, I was just going to say you can't do appropriate risk management for this if we're not measuring but, accurately. That's exactly right. And I mean, that's the, the big gap right now is that what nations and our, our are reporting is there's been a study over you know the period between 2005 to 2015 and there was um, a massive gap in what was being reported um, versus what was being um, uh, validated independently and I mean that's all changing today we've got a thousand earth observation satellites but we're really just scratching the surface cloud and, and artificial intelligence are, are combining they're enabling us to process and interpret these vast volumes of information and these huge data sets. And that's all making it possible for um, businesses and, and new companies to build applications for specific users. And we're starting to see that being adopted in agriculture, energy, transportation, uh, waste management. And it's really helping the businesses to improve their operations, but it's also enabling the financial markets to price in these externalities. How big was the gap, Chad? that you just mentioned, because it was what I was sort of getting at too, this gap, it seems, between actual emissions and what independent models perhaps are saying businesses, nations are emitting. Do we have a sense of how big that gap is? Well, so over that 10 year period, it was 5.5 gigatons. So massive. Um, and one of our portfolio companies, GHGSAT, is monitoring facility level emissions from space using satellites. And in Q2 alone, they identified 150 um, megatons. So, you know, there's big, big discrepancies. Yeah. 
which is why, despite best efforts, at least at this stage, far more needs to be done than we're doing, simply because we, we know, based on these kind of assessments, that we're way off in terms of our estimates of the impact that we're having. OK, so independent investment in this space, because to your point, and you mentioned your portfolio or a portfolio company, we are seeing more investment money pumped into this space. I believe $51 billion in, in 2021 is expected alone, which is yeah. great news. But private investment isn't enough. Are you having conversations? Are governments having conversations about recognising their limitations? Because this is not one business or one nation. Every nation, like the COP26, need to work together on this. We need accurate assessment of who's admitting what. Well, that's exactly right. And I mean, we need this data to enable the um, commercial markets, but also um, to enable governments to um, enact policy and regulation. On the finance side, though, it, the, you know, there's a lot of really interesting um, things happening on the innovation front um, with new companies starting up and being funded with venture capital. But you've also got large asset managers um, using their influence, like BlackRock um, has said that they are working to net zero across their portfolio, um, which is massive. You got TPG and Brookfield, each have con um, committed uh, $12 billion to invest in. And like you said, we're expecting $50 billion in investment into this category, the, the, the climate category, in this year alone, which is a record. So we're seeing a lot of really positive signs here. And what we know for sure, and what's come out of this um, IPCC report, is that you know, we have the, the, the science and we have the technology to understand and address the greatest challenges and also take advantage of the greatest opportunities of our time. And we're going to, we've been doing that and we're going to continue doing that through the data that we're collecting from space. Uh, Chad, very quickly, because I have about 30 seconds. The last 50 years have been devastating, according to this report. Based on the science, the innovation, the investment that you're seeing, are you confident that actually we know enough now and we're learning enough about what we're not doing to do better in the next 50 years? The pace of innovation is making me very optimistic. We have the, you know, the companies in our portfolio are doing some amazing things from um, monitoring the emissions um, uh, at the facility level, launching, launching new sensors that are giving us a more complete data set, um, distributing this data and also enabling and building the applications that are enabling the carbon markets of the future. Fantastic. Chad, get to Glasgow, please. We need you there in November to uh, educate you. some of these policymakers on where the money needs to be invested. Chad, great to have you with us. Chad Anderson, Managing Partner of Space Capital there. We're back after this. Stay with us.